Uh, it's good to be here. I, I had to work a little bit before this, actually. I'm a I'm an engineer during the day, and I work with all engineers. And I have a theory. Let's see if you agree. I think every engineer I've ever met is a little bit on the spectrum. <laughs> if you don't agree, go up to any engineer, not me, please, but go up to any engineer and just lightly put a hand on their back. <laughs> See how long it takes before they freak out. It's a pretty <laughs> fun game. My record's one second. That's as far as I've gotten with it. But I think that's the trade-off, though. You gotta be like, if you wanna be an engineer, you gotta be a little bit on the spectrum. That's why I think it's weird. My friends now, they're like, how do we get our kids into engineering? <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, you can try getting them vaccinated, see if that shakes something loose. I don't know <laughs> how it works exactly, but. And then what's like wild is all the best engineers are way on the spectrum too, you know, like Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, even Elon Musk got diagnosed with Asperger's, right? So I I'm not saying we need to figure out how to give like more kids autism, but <laughs> if we want to solve this global warming thing, we got to start taking some swings somewhere. And I don't know <laughs> where the solutions lie, you know, like maybe we just factored into the admissions process in engineering school, I think. You know, like, oh, like, Kevin took five AP classes his senior year. Well, Dave's had a train-themed birthday party for 10 years running, so maybe. <laughs> maybe we give him a shot in the fall is all I'm saying. Let's see what he can do, you know? I don't know. Engineers aren't too popular right now, understandably. So, because there's all these, like, massive problems that aren't getting addressed at all, right? You know, everyone's like, hey, we want clean energy, like, stop deforestation, make food that doesn't poison us. And all of us engineers are like, gotcha. How about a razor with an even closer shave? How does, <laughs> how does that sound? Five blades? Not enough. That's what I say. There's, a, there's no money in clean energy. That's kind of the problem. Like, none of my friends went into it after college, which is sad, you know, like we all wanted to. And then we got one look at our student loan bill and we're just like, you know, the people at Gillette are actually doing some pretty groundbreaking stuff and <laughs> really got their finger on the pulse of society, I would say, you know. Also, I got some pretty bad uh, insomnia lately too. I don't know if anyone struggled. I figured out the cure, if you're wondering, the cure was uh, sleepy time tea. It was uh, sleepy time tea and uh, in trazodone. That's a uh, winning combo, oddly enough. And it's it's the same stuff they give dogs during thunderstorms. I found out, which made me feel a little better about taking it, honestly. Because like first night on it, slept great. Next morning though, couldn't stop sniffing my balls. So that was the one side effect on that one. You know, insomnia. It has to be the most like white privilege disease there is, right? Because only people with cushy desk jobs are getting it, you know? Like no one's ever been like cutting and hauling lumber for 16 hours a day and then gone to bed like, I just can't turn my brain off tonight, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, you know? <laughs> Like, you think those guys, like, pouring concrete in the middle of August are coming home and wearing those little blue light blocker lenses at the end of the night? No, they're passing out like goddamn men. That's what they're doing. I don't know. I think just, like, if we did some studies, we'd find direct correlation, like, people with sleep issues and people with winter jackets for their dogs. I think that's kind of <laughs> the crossover we'd find a little bit. Yeah, I, am a, I was dating a, a human woman recently, which was pretty cool. And, um, but I was, I was noticing she was like watching a lot of these serial killer documentaries before her bed to relax, I guess. It was a little strange to me. I'm like, you want a melatonin? She's like, I prefer murder. And you're like, whoa. All right. But both of our favorite parts of those shows is when they show the behaviors that make up a serial killer, you know? Because like, she was watching it like, oh, like, I wonder if we know any serial killers. And I'm watching it like, oh, I wonder if I'm a serial killer, huh? <laughs> it's like two very different viewing experiences, you know? Because, like, she was watching it like, oh, I didn't know starting a lot of small fires was a sign. We should watch out for this. And I'm like, uh, for sure. And, like, how many fires did they say were too many fires to be starting. <laughs> they didn't? Okay. 
And she was like so cocky watching those shows too. She's like, oh, it's so obvious. I would have known like as soon as he moved in next door. I would have known immediately. I'm like, they're closer than you think sometimes. I don't know <laughs> if I'd be so sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs>